I am Eileen Warnos, an American serial killer who operated from 1989 to 1990 in Florida. During that time, I murdered at least seven men. I would lure them with the promise of prostitution and then shoot them at close range. My main motive was robbery, as I would steal their money and belongings. While I claimed self-defense in some cases, saying they had assaulted me, the evidence suggested otherwise. I specifically targeted middle-aged men. Eventually, I was arrested, convicted, and sentenced to death. The media gave my case a lot of attention due to my troubled background and the complexities surrounding my motivations. I was executed by lethal injection in 2002. I am Susan Lucille Wright, an American convicted murderer from Houston, Texas. In 2003, I made headlines for tying my husband, Jeff Wright, to a bed and stabbing him a total of 193 times, committing what's considered mariticide and burying his body in the backyard of our Harris County home. I pleaded self-defense in the case, claiming a history of abuse from my husband. The court nevertheless convicted me of murder in 2004, sentencing me to 20 years at the Crane Unit in Gatesville, Texas. My parole requests were denied twice, on June 12, 2014, and July 24, 2017, respectively. However, I was eventually granted parole in July 2020, and I was released from prison on December 30, 2020. I am Candace Lynn Montgomery. I was accused of murdering Betty Gore, my lover's wife, in Wiley, Texas, on June 13, 1980. At that time, I was married to Pat Montgomery and we had two children. In 1977, we moved to Collin County, Texas, where I met Betty Gore, a middle school teacher, and we became close friends, despite the fact that I was engaged in an extramarital affair with her husband, Alan. One day, Alan was out of town. Growing concerned when he couldn't reach his wife by phone, he asked our neighbors to check on her. After forcefully entering the family residence, they made the horrifying discovery of Betty's lifeless body, struck 41 times with an ax. Investigators determined I was linked to the murder, but a polygraph proved I was telling the truth about acting on self-defense against Betty, who attacked me first with that ax. I was found not guilty by the jury on October 30th, 1980. I am Carla Homolka. Alongside my then-husband, Paul Bernardo, we became notorious for the Ken and Barbie killings that took place in Canada during the early 1990s. As a duo, we unleashed a wave of terror through a series of heinous crimes. We abducted, sexually assaulted, and brutally murdered three innocent teenage girls, including my own sister, Tammy. These acts of unspeakable cruelty were meticulously planned and executed with some of the horrifying assaults captured on chilling videotapes. However, our dark secrets could only remain hidden for so long. A relentless police investigation exposed the extent of our depravity, and the truth behind our twisted actions emerged into the public eye. Controversially, I struck a plea deal that portrayed me as a cooperative witness, leading to a reduced sentence. This decision sparked immense outrage and raised questions about justice and the severity of punishment. Paul was ultimately convicted for his role in the crimes, he was found guilty of numerous charges, including murder and sexual assault, and was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. The Ken and Barbie killings stand as a chilling reminder of the depths to which human evil can sink, leaving scars that can never fully heal. The victims and their families continue to bear the unimaginable pain caused by our sadistic crimes, while society grapples with the haunting complexities of justice. I am Dorothea Puente, an American landlady in the 1980s who ran a boarding house in Sacramento, California. Behind my seemingly ordinary facade, I harbored a dark secret. I specifically targeted vulnerable and elderly tenants, taking advantage of their trust in me. With calculated intent, I would administer drugs and poison, leading to their tragic deaths. To conceal my gruesome deeds, I would bury their lifeless bodies in the backyard of my property. The truth about my heinous actions was eventually unveiled when a diligent social worker grew suspicious and alerted the authorities. The subsequent investigation unearthed a horrifying scene, laying bare the extent of my atrocities. As a result, I was convicted of multiple murders and handed a life sentence without the possibility of parole. The legacy of my heinous crimes serves as a haunting reminder of the depths to which human darkness can descend, leaving a trail of irreversible suffering in its wake.